We're sitting here with Starbucks on the move, and I'm here with Crone Gracie. Uh, what's going on, man? How are you doing, brother? Doing good, good man. Good, doing man. good. Um, I've had the pleasure to be able to not only hang out here, but also to watch your academy and um, mm -hmm. see your students. And um, I was fascinated by um, just the calmness that you bring them. Mm -hmm. um, and it was something that, uh, you know, I think when you go into the school every time, you don't mm -hmm. know what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, and I was, um, I was impressed. First, I want to say, um, where did the logo come from? Uh, <laughs> it's an ice cream cone, and, and that wasn't what I expected. Where, where did that come from? Um, so, my brother-in-law, <clears throat> when I was undefeated as a brown belt, he was like, "Man, you gotta start. You gotta start calling you Ice Cream Crone, because you're just so cool under pressure." So it was kind of like a joke for a long time, and I kind of never took it seriously. And then uh, one day, I was kind of trying to think of my own logo, and. I kind of was like, well, this kind of makes sense because in life you got to kind of stay cool under pressure. And that's kind of what my whole life's been about. So whether it's jujitsu or not, life is going to give you difficult situations and it's going to, it's going to ask you to, it's going to demand from you. And if you're not calm and understand how to deal with those situations, you're going to, you're going to get worked. So I kind of use that as a motivation, not only for me, but for my students to make sure that they kind of whenever something difficult happens they kind of stay calm and they kind of yeah. stay ice cream crown. Stay ice cream crown. <laughs> um, one thing after just kind of getting to know you, we've been hanging out for a little bit, um, you know, uh, you're 25 yeah. now, you know, and um, the heart of a lion, I can tell. Um, and something that sometimes we get this thing of like overconfidence or something. Mm -hmm. But I noticed mm -hmm. something in you that it, it really is a belief system that I think you hold. And I think um, what I noticed is that that's probably one of the foundations of you winning, was it never giving up. What is it that you would tell people um, that want to maybe give up or if they want to quit or if that be the youth or it even be adults? Mm -hmm. um, I think everybody, it passes through everybody's mind the fact of, of, of letting go and not trying hard or giving up or, or whatever it is. Maybe it gets too difficult and they kind of just give up or, or try something else. I think that's normal. It's normal in anything that you do, and and at that moment, you gotta kind of regroup and really evaluate yourself and kind of see what 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 do I really want and what do I really do this for, and then with that, you you either go to that you try again or you try something else. But giving up is not an option. Whether you try something different or whether you try it again. There's many ways to go about it, but I don't think that it's right to give up and then step backwards. You have to give up, take a step backwards, and then go back or go to another place. Or always kind of try to find out how you're going to improve and how you're going to make yourself better. So it's normal, man. I've, I've had the thoughts, everybody's had the thoughts of giving up or trying or, or not trying or all these mixed feelings. Those are normal. How you deal with those situations and how you take it to motivate you and take it to to overcome when you overcome those feelings when you're tired and you stop that's one thing when you're tired and you go for an extra five minutes that's always that's an over you overcome yourself so i think life is about overcoming yourself overcoming the objective yeah. huh? the battle is always with ourselves it's never against anybody else really that's I, a good point that's what i kind of started to learn is it's never about my opponent or never about anything it's always a me against myself and the more you kind of understand that the more it, it allows you to see things clearly um you know we always look at different obstacles that people go through some people say i don't have money or i don't mm -hmm. have any of the things um very few people would say my obstacle was um and the advantage of having the gracie name mm -hmm. um i've always been curious at what point you know did you feel that you um Though you were born a Gracie, mm -hmm. um, at what point do you think that you harnessed being crone Gracie? Mm -hmm. You know, because that is something that I think probably was. Yeah, I think as like a, after I won the my first world championship as a purple belt, I think that's when I kind of started to become my own man, and people started to recognize me for my accomplishments. Um, and it kind of slowly grew from that moment on. I kind of had a good streak going for, as a purple and a brown belt. And I kind of started to become my own man. And, you know, everything was kind of easy. You know, I kind of won all my fights and I kind of had everything I needed to have. It was never really a big challenge in my life. Sure. 
And then as I got my black belt, you know, I lost my first match. It was a tough match to lose. It was your first? First match as a black belt. Really? Yeah. It was, my dad gave me the black belt two weeks before the world championships. And then you're hit with failure. Yeah, so my first fight, <laughs> my first loss, and my first tournament was the world championships as a black belt. Boom, I lost. I got my ass whooped and kind of really shook me up. And again, you have to, I was like depressed for a while and you kind of go down to this really low place and you think about what you're going to do with your life and you doubt yourself and you see what am I, is it even possible for me to be a champion? And then when you start to go back into your, your groove again and then you start to win, then you kind of realize that it's all a learning process and that's kind of, that's how it is. You know, everybody has the lessons they need to learn. and my lesson was a hard one and I think after my black belt match that's when I kind of really started to become a man and I kind of really had to ha have difficult things happen in my life sure. and, and and those difficult things m made me much better and made me more sure of myself and I knew that I could overcome diversity I knew I could overcome difficult obstacles in my life and now when a difficult thing happens I don't look at it and say like oh man I got this happened fuck <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is part of the deal. Let me sure. let me see how I'm gonna how I'm going to uh, overcome this because I got to overcome it. I'm not gonna die right now. I have to live through this. So either I'm gonna overcome it or I'm gonna give up, and I'm not gonna give up. So um, I think that's when I kind of really started to become a man and, and really be sure of myself. And whatever happens, I'm kind of happy with as long as I give it my best. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you know, I don't talk about it very much, but um, I actually started martial arts very young at about seven years old. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd watched many of the legacies at a young age, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And some of the names I could talk about that I had trained with, it was kind of funny. Um, but as I had gotten older, um, I had seen the um, martial arts change. And I think that um, uh, like MMA and all that started to come around. Um, I, I, it seems that you're making a transition. Mm -hmm. And what is that transition? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to start focusing on MMA now. I don't really like to call it MMA because it, for me it's not MMA. For me it's just fighting and it's, <laughs> it's palitudo and it's, it's, you know, that's what it is. So I'm going into MMA and um, that's my transition. I, I want to see how that goes and see how, how, what I can bring to the table and see how, how well I can perform in those circumstances. What are some of the things that you've enjoyed about business mm -hmm. um, and also jiu-jitsu together and how maybe they combined in the challenges? Yeah, I mean, I think it's difficult to do both, be a competitor and a teacher and run your own business, but I had no other choice. You know, I had no other option. Nobody was going to run my school for me. Nobody was going to open a school for me. Nobody was going to do anything for me. So if I wanted to train at my academy and have my students, I had to make that happen. So. Uh, I was left with the with an option to do this or or to not have an academy and try to train around places and you have to do what you have to do to to, to have the things that you want to have and to have this academy I have to do a lot of things I don't necessarily enjoy doing but and I think that that's like life right yeah exactly. um, I try to do as much as I can and the little that I can I'm thankful I can be a part of um, uh, there's something in my heart of helping less fortunate children, you know what I mean? And um, I've always said that, you know, we, we as people are often on one part of the opportunity, but sometimes we're on the other end of giving opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, in the jiu-jitsu world, um, how much do you see of that? Just how much, um, and you see people helping people and, and all of that. Um, what is it that you see in the jiu-jitsu world that gives back? Well, jiu-jitsu, is a direct, um, it just keeps on growing, you know, so one instructor, for the instructor to have money to eat, he needs to teach, he needs to give himself, and he, in that process, he gets good students, and in that process, the students start to help, and then so it kind of just, everything grows and helps each other, and it's kind of a, a cool, a cool thing to be a part of, because everybody benefits from being a in jiu-jitsu, whether you're a teacher or a student, or whether you're a student that becomes a teacher, I think you always kind of improve yourself and and you're always in search of a higher a goal. And with that, you know, you, 
the, the possibilities are endless on how you give back. I think it's difficult for you to give opportunities to other people when you have not have those opportunities for yourself. You know, it's kind of like if you don't know how to swim, how are you going to help somebody who's drowning? And then you can kind of help other sure. people and, and, and play that role. One thing that we mentioned, and we can kind of go from here, is that, um, you know, as becoming your own man, um, also we get the opportunity to create sometimes our own legacy. Mm -hmm. um, as Crone Gracie, do you have a goal for yourself? Yeah, I do. I have a, a goal to be the best, to be the best in the world, you know. And whether that happens or not, I think trying to be the best in the world is what my life mission is about. Not only for myself, but to make uh, it worthwhile for my father and my grandfather and to give that back to them because they did so hard and they worked so hard for what they achieved and I want to I want to make sure I give my best to make that legacy continue. Con Gracie, thank you, my Starbuck brother. on the move. Thank you, man. I really do appreciate it. Thank you.